The world of work is changing. You and I now live in a time where technology has caused a shift in how work is perceived, executed, and measured. Today, technology has enabled remote working, global talent recruitment, and increased overall efficiency and productivity. But these changes and advancements have extended to all industries, including those that have traditionally been called and perceived as well traditional. A prime example would be the financial services industry, which has primarily been inhabited by banks, insurance companies, and pension houses. And today, the rise of financial technology companies or fintechs is evidence of the drastic change that emerging technology can bring to any industry or company. However, these changes are not just limited to infrastructure, platforms, and the new channels for delivery. It goes further to change the core company culture, the roles and the career trajectory of those working within the space. So this raises the question, are traditional finance roles still relevant in a technology-driven workspace that continues to evolve? Should one looking to pursue a career in finance opt rather for a career in fintech since it's the future? How should someone currently working in traditional finance optimize their careers for the future of finance given the advent of technology and coaching on the space? This is the subject of discussion in today's video, so if you're keen, let's talk about it. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremy and if you're new here and haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so because on this channel I speak about fintech, digital transformation, career and personal development. Whenever we're making a career decision, there are certain general considerations that we tend to make. You may be looking for a career or a workplace that does impactful work with challenging problems, one with exciting growth opportunities and an inspiring mission. Some may be partial to a good working environment with great colleagues. Others still may prefer a role with security, stability, and good earning potential. Now, even though all of these are reasonable desires, it's usually near impossible to find a career or role that has everything. So your best bet is to identify which of these are your non-negotiables. And what I mean by that is the specific elements of work that make you comfortable enough to work and thrive, giving off your very best every day. When it comes to the working world of fintech and traditional finance, despite the fact that they essentially play within the same space, i.e. financial services, there are differences in the roles and career paths that lie within each space. Traditional finance institutions are the incumbents, like banks, who have been around for decades, if not centuries. Most of their processes and operations have been practiced for years, and the same goes for the roles which they usually recruit for. The path to a career in traditional finance as well is pretty well laid out and straightforward. You most likely would need a finance degree or a business related MBA or a second degree in order to have the prerequisite knowledge to apply for work in those industries. In terms of the roles available, there are those that are more standard and familiar such as the asset managers, the credit analysts, the bank tellers, the internal auditors, business analysts, etc. However, as technology began to advance and transform financial services, it gave rise to the newer players we now call fintechs who entered the space. Technology revolutionized a number of things, including customer expectations. Customers now had mobile devices which granted them access on demand to a number of services and they naturally expected that financial institutions would follow suit. Traditional finance institutions such as banks had to rethink their channels of distribution from the previous brick and mortar to the new spaces where the customers spent most of their time, which is online and on mobile. However, as you can imagine, the banks were slower to innovate and in stepped the fintechs who began to fill the gaps in service delivery. Even though a lot of banks embarked on digital transformation agendas and developed mobile banking apps and online banking platforms, the fintechs had the advantage because rather than trying to do everything, they focused on specific financial products and services and aimed to be the best at them, giving customers the best possible service and user experience. The finance houses and banks, on the other hand, were attempting to transform their full offering suite, which can be quite a Herculean task. Most banks had to redesign internal process and become more tech-oriented and innovative. And for some, they even went as far as acquiring fintechs or starting incubator or accelerator programs in order to not get left behind in the evolving space of financial services. As fintech and technology-driven financial services became more established, 
something interesting began to happen. A lot of traditional finance graduates and workers started to migrate towards the fintech industry and more fintech related roles. At the same time, more opportunities started emerging for people with tech backgrounds and skills within the financial services space. Before, a bank would most likely be composed 90% of business, sales, and operation staff, and about 20% would be a technology department or rather an IT department who were essentially responsible for keeping the lights on. So maintaining systems, troubleshooting, and fixing, just keeping the lights on essentially. However, within the fintech world, that ratio is now flipped and in some cases, a fintech can have up to 80% of their workforce being tech engineers with the remaining 20% focused on the sales, the marketing, the operations. The traditional finance institutions began to follow suit and today both fintechs and traditional finance players are essentially competing for the same top talent. Now all that is said, just to give you a background as to how we arrived at this point where many traditional finance workers and students are considering fintech related roles. As I mentioned earlier, most people make certain considerations when they choose a career or look to switch roles. The popularity of fintech roles is hinged on a few factors. One, it's evident that fintech is the future of finance. If you have a finance degree or work in traditional finance, then a transition to fintech serves as career insurance for the inevitable change that is already occurring within the space. You get a head start in learning what this new space entails in the delivery of financial services by leveraging emerging technology and adopting a problem-solving approach to delivering quality customer service. Two, the younger generation coming into the workforce are digital natives and they're already curious and familiar with technology and its application. That same generation typically prefers to work in an impactful environment where technology is being leveraged to deliver innovative solutions to change the lives of many. And thirdly, the fintech space that is mostly made up of startups is generating a lot of investor funding. In Africa, for example, 62% of the $4.2 billion raised by companies on the continent in 2021 were secured by fintechs. If you narrow that down just to the startup, then 50% of the $2 billion funding pot went to fintech startups. Now, this enables fintechs to bolster their operations and recruit or rather poach top class talent from the industry, most of whom are working with the incumbents. And my theory on why the fintech space is attracting so much attention from investors is that investors are putting their money towards the future. Investors are betting on the future of finance when they allocate capital to fintech startups because they are the ones who are moving financial services into the time ahead. Traditional institutions are still focused on the present and trying to maintain what already exists, whilst fintechs are innovating towards the future. Now with that said, let's talk about what you should expect from a fintech role as opposed to a traditional finance role and which of these would best be suited to you. Now it's honestly tough to say which is better than the other because both offer very different upsides and downsides depending on what you're targeting for your career or role. Traditional finance roles such as those we listed earlier on are typically tagged as the safer option of the two. Banking, for example, has a long-standing reputation of being a stable and secure career path, which promises growth that is clearly outlined. And as long as you do your job and do it well, you get to climb the ladder. From a remuneration point of view, traditional roles such as those in banking will get you a good pay package, even for entry-level positions, which I know counts a lot for most people. However, the fintech landscape is also on the rise. And as I've mentioned, with full investor backing, so they also pack a punch from a remuneration standpoint, since they also have to compete with the banks for that top class talent. In terms of culture, fintechs are seen as the new fun guy on the block, whereas the traditional institutions are the gray haired relative. Kunal Shah, the founder of Cred in India, shared something very funny. He mentioned that when he asked his young cousin why he didn't want to work or consider working with a few banks, the response was he didn't want to work for an uncle company. And that remark is very telling of how the youth perceive some of the traditional institutions. So as a company, you should ask yourself if you're perceived as an uncle company, and if the answer is leaning towards the affirmative, then you you need to make the necessary changes and adjustments. But going back to the fintech culture, it tends to be more electric and fast paced than the larger incumbent institutions. Even if you're within the same role, for example, you were a product manager in a traditional financial institution and now become a product manager in a fintech, you realize that although you may be working on the same things or the work may be similar, there is more room to innovate and amend process and there's easier collaboration and less silos and bureaucracy. Fintechs typically allow its people to 
learn disruptive technologies firsthand and maintain the startup culture, which has more relaxed workspaces and a more collaborative environment. From a work-life balance standpoint, it's hard to say which is the better option because although banks maintain the typical nine to five workday, most often you tend to work longer than that. In the same way, despite the fact that fintechs usually offer more relaxed working conditions, startups are usually trying to surmount challenging problems with fewer resources, i.e. hands on deck. So you might end up having to wear many hats at a time, which can translate into doing more work than was listed on your job description. So when it comes to determining if you would be a good fit for fintech roles, I would say that if you're the type that has a genuine interest in technology to impact lives, or you get excited by new challenges rather than feeling intimidated by them, and you tend to thrive in environments with less structure where changes happen quite often, then you may be leaning more towards the fintech space. However, if you're the type whose blood pressure fluctuates every time there's a major change or the semblance of chaos, and you prefer a more stable and predictable environment, then obviously traditional finance roles will be better suited to you. The world of finance is changing and it's exciting. I maintain that the future of finance is fintech, and it's great that we're seeing more collaborations and partnerships between the traditional players like banks and new innovative startups within the space. I hope our conversation has given you some better perspectives about the different career paths and roles within the financial services industry. If you did find this video valuable, then remember to hit the like button, drop me a comment, and as always, you can grab your African print outfits from Wear Ghana at a discount using the link in the description. Have an amazing week, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. <laughs>